Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to more Kingdoms Reborn. We've played this a couple times on the channel, had a lot of fun with it, and the reason we're coming back today is because not too long ago, a new faction was introduced into the game. It is the Norsemen. I mean, obviously I have to play the game again if you're introduced Norsemen. How could I say no? It's just too fun. So we'll play around with these guys. Now, they are considered to be a higher difficulty than a lot of the other factions because their bonuses, while good, are not quite as impactful as some of the other factions like the Duchy or the Emirates. We will get a 20% cold resistance, which does not go nearly as far as you would expect, and we'll have a 30% woodcutting yield boost. That's pretty darn good, but again, doesn't go quite as far as you would expect. We'll also have honeymead and cheese as unique resources for us. I think I'll go ahead and set up a quick map over here. Medium size, medium C, all this seems fine to me. I will have, I think, five players, and I would normally ramp up towards something like Emperor difficulty on this, but they actually scaled up the difficulty of the game pretty substantially in the last patch. Consumption for things like fuel has gone up quite a lot, and it really can mess you up. So we'll be playing on a brutal difficulty today with a 90% consumption boost, and hopefully this is not a horrible mistake. Let's start up a new game. Now, if you have not seen Kingdoms Reborn before, I would actually recommend you take a look at the other series on my channel, but basically the premise is pretty straightforward. There was a great cataclysmic freeze that destroyed human civilization. It's melted. The continents are all looking quite different as a result, and now humans are trying to get started once again. Biggest thing right now is figuring out where the heck we want to settle, and that is going to be a little bit tough for us. It's always good to settle next to a river if you can, it would be really fun to play in the Boreal Forest, if possible, as the uh, Norsemen, because that does seem thematically appropriate. However, because of the consumption boosts for things like fuel, it actually ends up being extremely difficult to work around, so I'm not sure that's going to be a winning choice for us. Some like this is actually quite tempting to me. It's a very expensive forest province at the beginning of the game. But it is close to some tulips and a new icon over here which represents kind of any sort of a crop field you want to place down. I think that includes such things as like cotton, grapes, whatever it's going to be. Uh, it's no longer quite as broken down by individual resources. The intention is to be a bit more flexible, I think. It's next to a uh, zone with some coal in it, which isn't bad. We're not far from cannabis, we're not far from tulips, and it's a large map area with a lot of stone and a lot of trees. I think this is going to be our winning start. Uh, let's see, a forest down over here is not bad either. Looking for anything else that would make more sense. Do, do, do. No, I think this is going to be fine. And we're not going to play on the Savannah, because I think that's a little bit too strong, if I'm being completely honest. All right, let's give this one a go. Bada boom. As far as what we're going to need, I mean, we're going to need food for sure. We probably don't need quite so much lumber, since we're going to have a lot to start off. I think the medicine we don't want to mess with. I can leave a little bit less tools, but tools is going to be important for us. So maybe a little bit less stone. I want to ideally have about 2,000 or so gold. That is going to be a goal for me. All right, let's go ahead and confirm this. And now we have to place down our town hall. Of course, with the Norseman faction, we do have totally unique aesthetics for the buildings, which is going to be kind of fun for us. As far as a good starting location, uh, I mean, yeah, let's place a town hall roughly over, uh, I'm going to say over here. I think over here is going to be completely fine. We'll rename it later. So now for our starting card. I never go for Miner's Fortune. I don't think it's really worth it. The trading post is not a bad choice, to be, uh, be sure, because trade is absolutely crucial in this game. It is not the same as Banished where you are shooting for self-sustainment. I make this mistake every time I play the game. Trade is absolutely crucial. However, the investment card is also very good. The uh, income goes up for every 20 gold I have. If you have 2,000 gold, you're going to have an extra 100 income, which would more than triple my income right now. And that's pretty darn strong. So I'm going to rush for trade with some uh, research, but investment hopefully gets me enough income that I'll be good. Now, I don't think I'm going to need some guidance. Let's go ahead and toss the card in over here. If we unpause the game, we're going to get a biome bonus. There it is. So the question is, what do we want here? Farming is really good. 10% productivity of farms is always strong. Um, but it only applies to farms in a forest biome. I'm surrounded by forest biomes, so this actually could be a very good choice for me. The alternative, of course, is to go for something like charcoal making. 30% extra productivity is not bad. It makes your lumber go a lot further to produce coal, and if you get enough um, sustainment and productivity books to kind of boost up that efficiency, you end up producing a lot of extra fuel. So I'm kind of tempted to try this. I don't think I would normally recommend it, but I, I think for fun, I want to go for charcoal making and see if we can do something with that. I've never really, I've never really invested heavily before, but I think it could be kind of good. Let's go ahead and start gathering up some resources. We'll start by gathering up, let's say, some of the stone and stuff over this direction. Get a lot of that cleared out. I do need to clear out some of the trees in my immediate vicinity, including some of the fruit trees, I'm sad to say. Though, 
tell you what, I'm gonna cancel, I'm gonna cancel gathering up the fruit trees. Let's make sure that we just have them around for now. Early game food is very, very difficult to work with. That is simply the way of things. Uh, in the first few years of the game, you're probably going to lose a lot of people, especially if you play on a very, very, very high difficulty. This isn't even a very high difficulty, and I definitely expect it to start losing quite a few people. Now, again, if you have not seen this game, one very critical mechanic you need to know is you can't usually place down buildings at will, with the exception being things like houses, farming once we have that, and some storage yards. What you have to do is draw cards every, I think it's like every 130, every 140 seconds or so. So from here, we can choose what we want. We do start with foresters, which is pretty darn good, actually, um, as the uh, the Vikings here, the Norsemen. I'm not going to get an immigration office. A hunting lodge is okay. Yeah, I'll take that. There are some animals around. What I'm really looking for is a fruit gatherer. I think that would be fantastic for us, but okay. Let's start by placing this kind of out here, because once I have some fruit, uh, I'm going to be placing those next to my hunting lodges for some stacking bonuses. So let's do something like this. It covers a pretty wide area. As far as some housing locations, we do need to get a couple of houses kind of early on. Higher appeal is always a good idea, but I don't know that we're going to have that option for now. Let's just go for two houses to start off. Over here, I am going to probably cap out some of the laborers. Make sure you always have two uh, build, uh, laborers and two builders. We can always pull back on that later, but I want to make sure that these people are going to be available for us. So there we have the hunting launch. We'll start killing off some of these animals. I do think that spending... Some stone for productivity is not a bad idea in this case. We could go for poison arrows, which reduces the amount of food you get, but you kill animals a lot faster. Um, I'm not quite at that point yet, but I think poison arrows can theoretically increase your food production as long as there's a lot of animals around. And eventually these animals are going to get used up. There are probably some animal dens somewhere. I didn't see any animal burrows. They're probably hidden amongst all the trees, but in theory, they're around somewhere. Let's take a look for some cards. I definitely want that Fruit Gatherer. Charcoal Burner is tempting. I probably don't need it right now, but I will want this at some point soon. We'll start by just going for food. Some people absolutely love Mushroom Farms, and I think that they're probably more viable as the uh, Norsemen than some other options because we're supposed to get a boost to our wood yield whenever we chop things down. That said, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel especially confident that it's going to be a good choice for us. Um, let's start by placing down the Fruit Gatherer. Let's say right here is fine. We'll get that sucker built up as quick as we can. That needs to be a high priority for us um, because we can start getting up some food. And one fun thing about the Hunting Lodge and the Fruit Gatherers, they synergize if they're next to each other. So, for example, spend a little bit of wood, get 30% productivity if there is an adjacent Fruit Gatherer. There's going to be. And the same kind of thing can happen with the Fruit Gatherer. If it's next to a Hunting Lodge, you get a productivity boost. Now, the first of our houses are built up. Houses are going to be producing me some income plus some science. I will definitely spend some stone in order to insulate these so they consume less fuel come winter. Um, we need that science, of course, to research some of the many, many techs that are available in this game. And the first thing I'm going to go for is foreign trade, because trade is your lifeline in this game. Seriously. Everything in this game is actually about building up a strong capitalistic empire that specializes in some sort of good, becomes really efficient at making something worth a lot of money, and then trading for whatever you are deficit in right at the, at, at the moment. I know, I know. It's, it's kind of crazy, but, like, it really is important. Like, stupidly important that you could good trade. I forget that so often. It's a huge mistake. All right, so with two houses, that's going to boost up my science at least a bit. We're now up to six. So this should only take me 30 minutes or so to research. Um, that's still obviously too long, but we'll go with it. This is interesting. Is this not a thing anymore? I need to check some patch notes. Uh, we may see these pop up in a little bit. Not too long ago, there was something new that was added into the game, which was um, basically upgrade points. Uh, and you would need those in order to upgrade some of your buildings. I don't see them anymore, so I'm wondering if they got stripped out in the last patch. Totally possible. Uh, I don't know if there's a point in boosting up hunting lodges. I guess I will do so. Right now, my people are a little bit slower than I would like. Can you guys please build this gosh dang fruit gatherer? What is wrong with you all? This is like a top priority. Build this sucker up. Hello? What are you doing? Build. Build, dang it. Build! Apparently there are trees in the way. Oh, well, that's probably fine. Uh, okay, so where else can we place down some stuff? We can place down at least a couple more houses off in this direction. I don't want to do too many houses, and we actually need to be careful not to overexpand our population. I know that sounds tempting. One more fruit gatherer is a must, by the way. Pig ranch? It's not bad. It can definitely produce a lot of food. Sheep would have been nicer, because then I could start getting wool and trading that. But in lieu of that, I think pigs will be fine. Let's just try to get our food under control. I definitely am placing down another fruit gatherer right next to the hunting lodge, kind of like that. 
So we'll get those things set up as quick as we can. Pigs need to go somewhere with fertility, and the good news is in a forestry biome, fertility is not so much of an issue. We've got plenty of that to go around, so I probably can fit you somewhere. Um, the question is where. I don't know if I want to take up all the space around the river, uh, because I'll probably need to have some clay production and stuff there at some point, so maybe not a top priority. So now we have this. We've unlocked the priority button. I'm going to go ahead and use the pest traps. I'm questioning whether I want to spend my tools. I guess we can. So we'll go ahead and do some fruit gathering. We could switch this over to Meticulous. Takes twice as long, but yields more fruit. Good if you don't have a lot of fruit trees, so you need them to go uh, further. But otherwise, I think normal is going to be the way to go. I'll prioritize getting another one of these fruit gatherers up and running. I'll even say the existing fruit gatherer. Hello, click on it, please. Ah, there you go. Is a top priority, so people are always working over here as much as they can. Need to make sure we have plenty of food. Food is going to be a tough one for me. Foreign trade is still on its way, but it's still been pretty slow. What else do we need here? Um, I guess I could actually go for all of these, and I'll hold on to them, because I can basically have the exact same setup of another hunting lodge with two more fruit gatherers, and that would result in a pretty hefty amount of money. Now, where'd the animals go? Because it looks to me like the animals are already all gone. Yep, they are. Well, that didn't take long. They're all over here now. Yeah, and if we don't have any animal burrows, and I didn't see any, um, then that means I don't know that they're going to be spawning anymore. And if that... Oh, wait, there's one more animal up there. I'm looking for a burrow. Any sign of them. If not, what we can do is we can disable um, the hunting lodge and just save our laborers. And we'll still end up benefiting pretty tremendously from having the fruit gatherers nearby. But it does mean that my upgrades here were a mistake. I will place down a forester, and we will get the same upgrades for these fruit gatherers. These are top priorities. Now, the forester is going to be cutting down non-fruit trees and planting fruit trees. With this, we hopefully, over the long term, are going to have a pretty massive amount of food being produced in one local area right here. And that's going to be very, very solid. Let's go ahead and, I guess, boost up the fruit gatherers before we waste any time on any of that. We have another house. Let's upgrade that as well. So now we should be producing foreign trade in about 10 minutes or so, which is not fast, but not terrible. Um, could go for fish. I don't honestly think it's worth it. Uh, we could re-roll here, more pigs. I'm going to go ahead and buy a charcoal burner. And probably even a tavern is... Nah, let's not get the tavern yet. I need to save some money. Let's do this for the moment. So the charcoal burner is going to let me start producing some coal using my wood. Now, of course, people don't want to live next to this, so we have to place this a bit further away from the residential areas, but that's fine. Um, where do we think we're going to have a residential area? That is a very good question. Let's go for something like this, I think. Yeah, that'll be fine. And we'll set up some more storage yards to go right along, I guess, here. It's not, not not super pretty, but whatever. There we go. And that should be enough to kind of keep things going for us. All right, get that set. Boom, boom, bada, bada, boom. Uh, where do we want to have the piggies? The piggies, the piggies. Let's go ahead and place the piggies right along here. Yeah, it's going to be cutting slightly into my forestry area, but not too bad, I think. We could talk to some wandering traders, and I guess I don't mind selling at least a bit of leather for a little extra cash, keep me above that 2,000 mark. And by doing so, we're just increasing our income a little bit more. That's going to be nice. Let's boost up the uh, Forester, just to make sure we can get that built up a little bit faster. We can probably pull back on the number of builders we have here. Set that down to, let's say, one. But I always want to have a couple of laborers set aside, ideally, so that we can chop down some resources if that's what we need. New cards? Nothing I like here except for maybe an immigration office. I'll go ahead and buy it. So I have the option of increasing my population at least a bit. Could set you down, like, let's say right there. I'm going to pause you for now, say don't mess with that. But eventually we're going to want that. There's the upgrade points. Okay, so this is what I was talking about uh, before. So certain buildings, not the ones that I have currently, but certain buildings, like the charcoal burner, there it is. If you want to get these things upgraded... They are going to require that you spend resources and an upgrade point. That is a new thing that happened in the last major patch. I'm going to be honest, I'm not a fan of this. Because the costs, as far as I know, are still pretty darn high. And all this does is create a new thing where you can't upgrade buildings unless you have certain populations. And it kind of slows down your ability to play the game. I think if you had upgrade points instead of costs, or at least the costs were reduced, it might feel a little bit more balanced. But I don't know. We'll go with it for now. Um, I could spend some stone to reduce the input here, and I could spend some money to boost up productivity, but I'm not going to do that right now. What happens is we have 7 wood being turned into 27 coal right now, okay? Now, coal produces twice the heat 
of wood. So theoretically, what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, seven wood and I'm turning it into approximately 54 wood worth of heat. It's going to take a little while to produce this, right? You have to be building this up pretty fast, but it's pretty awesome. So I like this, and of course, if you get more of them, we can stack up some other modifiers, which just makes them better as we go. So I'm hoping that this is going to be the right way to go. We'll go ahead and do a little boost on that, continue boosting up some food, for example. Um, I think nothing else matters at the moment. Do we have enough stone and stuff to go around? Yeah, my builders are just really slow, but we're working on it. There's some extra storage yards, just to make sure that we don't run out of anything. How are we doing as far as our resources? Food is sort of okay at the moment. We're holding on, we're holding on. Foreign trade is still going. Can't build out any more houses. Don't have enough population for that. And honestly, until I get an immigration office, we're not going to. So we'll live with that at the moment. I probably will be boosting up the pigs uh, as soon as I see people are starting to work on this. Which is someday, I am sure. They're trying to get rid of some other resources that are in the way. Ah, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, any sign of more animals? Uh, I'll click here. There's just the one deer hanging out who appears to be stuck. And I don't seem able to reach them. There's another animal over here as well. Just looking. Am I missing something? Any burrows at all? Doesn't look like it. If that's the case, let's keep an eye on this. This Hunter's Lodge will probably stop having as much resources. And if that's the case, I'm just going to stop having people work there at all. Why waste my time on it, right? Why, why have laborers working on something that's not productive? And that actually was a problem that I was having when this uh, first started up, when this new uh, patch first began. Uh, I was playing through it on the Burial Tundra, and I was finding that the fishing boats were broken. and People were literally working there, but producing absolutely nothing. Had to get in touch with the uh, devs via the Steam forums, and they ended up fixing in the last patch, which is why we're jumping that back into this now. But it took a resource that like I was completely banking on, and it just was not working. It was like, oh man, that doesn't, that doesn't feel right. Hey, can you guys get over here and build the dang thing? I'm pretty sure I've told you to build this a long time ago. Gosh! <laughs> There's the trade. All right, next thing we're going to work on is basic medicine. I want to get this up and running ASAP because medicine is going to run out at some point. I do not feel like I need a trading post, but I do want to have a trading port. Ports are going to be great for just transferring some resources out of here. So where am I going to set this up in an area that makes some sense? How about over, I guess over here is fine. Yeah, let's do that. That seems all right. Let's get some roads placed around here as well. I want to make sure that people are easily able to get around. Probably should get myself some storage over here as well. And we'll do something. Let's just do something like this for the time being. We can always get rid of some of it later. Immigrants want to join. Always accept, even if you don't have space for them. They may leave, but the reason you always accept them is you get a card. And cards are helpful. Let's go for a passion book. Uh, this is going to boost up productivity and some job happiness. And what we can do is toss that into, let's say, a fruit gatherer where happiness is pretty low. We could toss that into a forester. We could toss it into the hunting lodge. Uh, or we could just toss it into something like a charcoal burner where people are already really unhappy. And extra productivity is great because seven wood now becomes 30 coal. How are we doing as far as coal? It says we're producing a lot more than we're consuming right now. If that's the case, what I'm going to do is go to these houses and turn off using wood as fuel and only allow them to use coal. Because I do not want them to use the inefficient material when I can get more heat value out of coal instead. Stop using up all my input, please, and thank you. That at least is the theory. So we're starting to get that trading port up and running. This is going to be great. Okay, now we have access to trade, and this is such a big, big deal for us. So, um, as far as what we need, food production has dropped significantly. We're going to end up needing some tools. We are okay on coal at the moment, maybe medicine as well. Everything else is looking kind of all right, as long as we keep our food under control, be fine. I'm okay with selling off uh, all of my leather at the moment to get some extra money. Never mind, we can only sell 60. That's significantly reduced than what I remember. Okay, let's go ahead and sell that, get a bit of extra cash. With that cash, uh, I think we increase the load. There it is. All right, so 240 goods quantity per trade, very expensive. Increases the upkeep cost of a trading post by kind of a lot. That's the real downside of this thing. Um, it, it, it increases your upkeep by 50, which is going to cut into my income by a lot here. We'll go ahead and boost this up as far as speed right now so it completes... What? Cannot be used. They changed something here, too. Really? You can't boost up trading posts anymore? Well, that sucks. All right. You used to be able to do that, and it would greatly speed up when the cooldown expired so you could perform more trades. But okay, instead we have to wait until we get to more ages and upgrade this thing, and that'll happen passively instead. Hmm. Well, anyway, the point is, um, you can sell a lot more goods, but it's a pretty expensive endeavor, so we got to be kind of careful about that. We have some homeless people. We sure as heck do. Uh, let's go ahead and allow for some extra constructions on housing and make sure we get that going. How are we doing as far as food? We're starting to kind of get close to the cap here. Um, we need to continue gathering up more fruit. I'm going to go ahead and chop down a few non-fruit trees. Looks like there's a lot of fruit trees around here. 
These oranges are not producing either that or they have been already gathered up. One of the two. Yeah, we're definitely not getting much value out of this hunting lodge anymore. Unless an animal occasionally wanders in, which is great. That's fine, though. Once you have enough money, something you can do is start buying out some additional provinces. Uh, it gets you more room to expand, which is always nice. It also increases your income because you have more taxable land, which is not bad. So I'll go ahead and buy this. And eventually, I'm going to want to go ahead and buy this forest province to get access to the tulips as well. And by the way, this is one of those burrows that I'm talking about. Something that changed recently in the game is fertility. It's uh, a little bit more important and more pronounced than it used to be. Um, if you ever see an open area with a bunch of flowers in it like this, you know this is an extremely fertile area. This would be an amazing place to farm out a ton of tulips for my uh, early game luxury needs. Would love to do that, but it's not going to be an option for at least a bit. There is something down over here. We have some tribes, plus we have something along here. Looks like we could engage in foreign trade with these guys. This is something we'll be able to do uh, as far as either raiding them or just having a trade route of some sort to get some extra money. Not a bad plan. Uh, I don't think I can claim this province yet, but I could claim this one. Not worried until I have a lot more cash to work with. There's the trader, by the way. That takes care of that. Anything else we want to sell off? Answer, yes. We want to go ahead and sell off a bit more leather just to keep some extra cash on hand. Looking fine so far. All right. Uh, we have a house. Let's go ahead and boost up that insulation so we don't waste much. We are producing a pretty good amount of coal over here for sure. Um, I'm going to spend some money to boost up productivity even further. Now 7 becomes 34. And one thing that's great about this is every wood is worth 6.46 gold, but we're producing so much coal. In theory, what we're doing is we're also producing a lot of money. So we're producing a base need, and we're building up an economy right now at the same time. That is not so bad. We can have a lot more pigs over here, by the way. Nothing we can do about that at the moment, though. Um, I'm planning down having some additional hunting lodges and fruit gatherers over here because uh, it looks like we are tapping out a lot of this area. But it'd be nice to be able to get some extra fruit. So if we have extra population sitting around, and at the moment I do have eight laborers, we could go ahead and boost up our food production further. And I think that's going to be a good idea. Let's go ahead and just plan on doing that right now. Because um, if we, we are kind of hitting a uh, in the red on our food right now, there's a bit of a deficit. And it's easy to suddenly find yourself spiraling out of control if you are not producing enough food. So I want to get that back under control there. 18 adults, 5 children, not too bad. 17.2 food. If we could afford to buy a bunch of luxuries, that would be fantastic. But right now, that doesn't appear to be an option. Very soon, we're going to have access to the basic medicine. With basic medicine, like so, I'll just go ahead and plant down the seeds. We now can place down farms. Let's go to the tech over here. Sheep would be good for me, for sure. Um, furniture would not be bad. In theory, we are very good at producing lumber, and that means we can start producing some sort of luxury. Mushroom logs, I don't think I'm using at all, so it's kind of between furniture and sheep. Beer brewing is something we're not going to do until I have access to wheat seeds anyway. So let's go ahead and start researching furniture. It would be nice to be able to start producing my own um, luxury resources. They do cost a lot of money in upkeep. That's kind of one of the big downsides, but... Nonetheless, we'll give it a go. Let's boost these things up. I need to buy some more tools because we're kind of out. And this is where I think it's now worth spending the money to boost up the upkeep of our trading port so we can have much, much larger loads of things to trade off. Not that I have a ton of excess goods, but I'll happily trade some of the coal in exchange for some tools. So let's go ahead and click on this. Uh, I'll sell the rest of the leather that I currently got. Let's sell at least a good chunk of the coal. And I think under tools, we want to buy... Probably probably like 50 iron tools would be nice. They're very expensive is the downside. Maybe 40. And then we can sell off more coal just to kind of make up the difference. At least until we get to our cap. So that's going to cost me a chunk of cash. And all of a sudden I'm down to only 500. And that's not good because it kills my investment car to buy a lot. But uh, at the very least, you know, once this is expired, we'll have some more tools arrive. And I really need to have tools. Tools get consumed a lot faster now. And that sucks for obvious reasons. Um... We would like to have a lot more tools sitting around. But your consumption, like, th that's why I'm playing on only a brutal difficulty instead of anything higher. The consumption rate of your people has increased so darn much. It's a bit much, in my opinion, honestly. It's kind of a little too much. And let's get down over here to farms. And I'd like to try going for some uh, herbs, if at all possible. We can set up something like this. I think 60 is supposed to be the number you're really shooting for. Because that's like the optimal working conditions. I think something like that, for example, is kind of okay. 
We'll get this set up along like so. I just want to start planting down some medicinal herbs. We are going to run into a medicine deficit, which is going to kill a lot of people if we don't get this set up. Basically this season. Let's go ahead and use some stone, get that boosted. I'm not going to spend the money right now. We don't have it. I will spend some lumber to get a charcoal burner guild that does spend some of my upgrade points. But the result is, for having two charcoal burners in the city, both get a 10% boost. So now, 7 becomes 36. That ain't half bad. All right. We're doing okay here. Not not great. Yeah, not, not outstanding. But we're doing okay here. If we can get up to the furniture over here and start producing some of our own luxuries, that's going to be massive for me. The reason being, if you have luxuries, these houses will level up. We have tier 1 luxuries. Beer, cannabis, furniture, pottery, and tulips, right? And this is actually where having access to things like cannabis or tulips early is nice because it's just farming. doesn't really require any major input, and it help, makes it very, very easy to get some tier 1 luxuries up and running. If you've got those, though then your houses are going to level up. Leveled up houses produce uh, better efficiencies and more money and more science, all of which is outstanding if you're trying to ramp up your economy as fast as possible. So I want to get those going, and that's where I want to finish up this furniture tech in this video and try to get that set up. Now we have access to some upgrades. So we have tech and we have access to upgrades. Upgrades can lead to things like even more productivity on charcoal burners, or we could learn about wheat seeds and start growing that for some extra food. Wheat's not bad, and uh, we could start turning that into beer at some point. I will definitely buy my first furniture workshop. Cannot fit this right here, which I say is very unfortunate. But okay, um, let's set one up over this direction. Ultimately, you want to have a lot of the same luxuries. Now, this sounds weird, right? Because it sounds like you want to produce everything. That's that's how most of these colony survival games work. You want to become super self-sustained and produce absolutely everything. But in this game, no. You want to take advantage of stacking modifiers, like with this charcoal burner and the burner guild, having eight would get me a 30% productivity boost. Same thing is true with furniture. You want to get so many efficiency bonuses that you are so unbelievably good at producing furniture that you make lots and lots of money before you even bother moving on to a lot of other um, luxury sources, unless you're running out of imports, which can happen, but ideally is not going to happen. So the furniture workshop's up and running. This is going to take some of that lumber. It's going to start producing furniture. Now, 10 lumber is worth about 60 or so gold. It's going to produce uh, about, and, eh, about 115 or so um, gold worth of furniture. So it is a value increase, but I'm not going to be selling the furniture. I'm going to be turning these things into uh, better houses. That's kind of one of the tricks. So hopefully it ends up paying for itself. Let's chop down more trees that are not fruit gathering, uh, producing. Whoops, there you go, do that. I want more lumber on uh, site so that I can, one, keep the charcoal burners up and running at all times, and two, keep the furniture workshop going at all times. Our first house has leveled up to level two. It's this one right over here. And the result is, not only does it look nicer, but it produces 14.2 gold and five science instead of 9.7 and three. So it's going to give me a bit of a boost. If I can get all these houses upgraded, that's going to be a huge boost to my science and a pretty nice boost to my gold. That is the entire point. So other than that, what else do we need? We've got... I guess I don't really know how many laborers I've got at the moment. Let's wait until we get to the next season. People get back to work. Looks like we have six. Six free laborers at the moment. That's good if we want to continue gathering up some resources. But I could also set up, let's say, another farm. So something kind of like this. Yeah, we can get another farm going. And even if I have extra herbs, I can sell those. I want to have more stuff to sell. Guess what? We're out of tools again. For God's sake, you guys go through tools so fast in this game right now. It seriously didn't used to be this bad, but tools are, like, really, really bad. They're hard to come by. Up to 25 science now, which means some of these upgrades are going to go faster. And the upgrades are really pretty significant. Actually, instead of going for herbs, we can probably do wheat in a second. Hold on. Let's click on this. Boom. And, yes, more immigrants is great. Another passion book would be fantastic. And over here, I'm going to swap this over to wheat, because wheat we can turn directly into a food source. That is going to be huge. Let's toss a passion book over here, and let's go to our upgrades. Anything else I want to get? Yes, some more charcoal burners would not be bad. Cabbage seeds are okay. Could get military units. Not worried about that right now, though. Uh, productivities, if we do this 10 times, you can get up to 30% more productivity, which is nice. But one time, and I can get charcoal burners. And honestly, it doesn't even increase how much it costs to make charcoal. It just makes things more efficient. So this is a decent start, I think for our brutal difficulty run of Kingdoms Reborn with the new Norseman faction. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but I think we're doing kind of okay. We've got our legs under us enough that I feel like we're fine and we're able to continue building out our economy, but it's on a knife's edge. It would be very easy to run out of crucial things like tools and such, and all of a sudden we die. So let's keep an eye on that. Thank you all for watching. Hope you're looking forward to this series of Kingdoms Reborn. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.